Well, it's been an interesting week for the First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon. She's met Hillary Clinton. She's denied it. She's snubbing President Trump, but she says she's happy to meet him when he visits Britain. Well, she's had a special sit-down interview with our political correspondent, Glenn Campbell, and has also been talking about uh, the independence referendum. She says she's not thinking of having an early Holyrood election to break that deadlock uh, with the Prime Minister, Theresa May. And uh, Glenn Campbell began by asking Nicola Sturgeon about the American reaction to the situation in Syria. I think what I understand is the, the the instinct to do something in face of the quite horrific chemical attack carried out by the Assad regime earlier this week. That regime is completely beyond the pale. So there is, in these circumstances, I think, always a sense of wanting to hit back and to do something. My concern about airstrikes is and, and always has been that they are no substitute for a real plan for peace. And what we need to see in Syria is an end to the conflict, the multifaceted, horrible conflict that is underway in that country. Um, and I suppose I have a concern that airstrikes, particularly given what appears to be the quite dramatic change in uh, the position of the American administration, increases the uncertainty and the unpredictability of the situation in Syria. There must be the focus on trying to find a peace that is sustainable in Syria. Is that to say that dropping 59 bombs has made matters worse? No, I, I'm not saying that, and I think it's important for, for nobody to try to oversimplify the issues in Syria. But you know, I have had a long-standing concern, my party has had a long-standing concern about airstrikes in isolation. You know, I think experience, not just in Syria, but in past conflicts tells us that simply bombing a country from on high does not necessarily contribute to peace. And while I think it's too early to say this in Syria, we have seen in some past cases that isolated uh, air campaigns can exacerbate rather than help uh, build a peaceful solution. So I think what we need to see is an intensification of the work that's been led this very week in Brussels with the UN envoy in Syria to try to find uh, a peace that will be sustainable. I think there also has to be even more action by countries like the UK in terms of uh, refugees and giving uh, refuge to people who are fleeing that conflict. Uh, and I think all countries, and Scotland uh, is trying to play its part in this through the peace initiative I was talking about at the UN this week. The US government says it's acted because of the failure of the United Nations mm -hmm. to agree at the Security Council. Why do you so strongly support that institution when it has manifestly failed to resolve this crisis? Look, okay, I don't think anybody uh, argues, I, I certainly don't argue that the United Nations is perfect. I, I share the frustrations on many uh, cases, on many issues about the inability, particularly of the Security Council, given the ability of countries, uh, and in this context, Russia and China in particular, to veto uh, certain uh, certain actions. Were they wrong to but, do so? Uh, well, I'm trying to answer your, your question in terms of I, th I think those who criticise the United Nations, though, what, what they don't often answer is what would we do instead of the United Nations. The United Nations does a lot of fantastically good work across the country. Um, and yes, we all get frustrated in very difficult situations that it can't get unanimity on a way forward. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't continue to try to work through the United Nations to make that progress. And, you know, I've talked in this trip about the work of uh, Stefan de Mistura, the UN envoy on Syria. Uh, who I think has done very good work and needs to be supported to continue to try to find a peaceful end to the conflict in Syria and a peace that will be sustainable. And my doubt and my scepticism uh, about simply dropping bombs is that it doesn't necessarily take us one single inch closer to that peaceful outcome. You've been asked about independence with your proposal for another referendum. People have taken an interest in that while well, you've been here in the United States. Of course, you're in the standoff situation with uh, Theresa May and the UK government. What's your next move? Uh, well, I'll set that out to Parliament, uh, and I'm not going to get into that today. I, uh, I'm absolutely clear that the position of Theresa May, I just don't think, is politically sustainable. Um, if the Scottish Parliament is of the opinion, as it is, because it has voted in this way, that Scotland should be given a choice, not now, but when the time is right, when there is clarity about Brexit, and when, obviously, there is clarity also about independence, that we should have a choice about our future. Now, I will set out, uh, having written to Theresa May on the back of the Scottish parliamentary vote, uh, I've said uh, sometime after the Easter recess, I will set out what I consider the next steps to be, but 
I will set that out to Parliament. OK. Um, you've said to me this week that you're not planning to go to, to court. Do you rule out having a, an early Holyrood election? Look, let me set out. I, I'm not, these are not the kind of things I'm thinking of. I, I, I've got a responsibility to, to lead the country. I was elected as First Minister just uh, less than a year ago. I've got a responsibility to lead this country. Uh, we are very focused on uh, getting growth in our economy and transforming education. These are things that continue uh, to be my priorities. But I also think it's right that at the right time, Scotland doesn't have our future direction as a country imposed on us, but that we get to choose that. But um, you know, these sort of uh, you know, scenarios that are put to me are not the ones I am thinking of, but I do have an idea of how we progress the will of Parliament. Uh, but without uh, teasing you too much on that, I will set it out to Parliament in due course. OK, one more on this. Do you now accept that if there is going to be another referendum, the starting point for the debate will be Scotland outside of the, the European Union? Well, I, I, I accept that that is one of the scenarios we have to uh, take account Most of. Most likely one? Well, look, I am not in control of the Brexit process and timing, and I'm not, I'm not trying to avoid your question. I'm simply trying to be absolutely frank about it. Uh, I'm not in control of that process, but I have to take account of all of the likely twists and turns in that process. But what I've said is if Scotland is taken out of the EU, as part of the UK because the timescale is such that it leads to that. What is important, I think, is that we don't then allow lots of time to elapse, which you know, potentially makes it harder for Scotland to negotiate a different future. That's why I have said that Scotland's choice should be when there is clarity on both propositions, but before it's too late for us to take a different path. Well, at the, the political level, for some years now, even before the, the SNP was in power, there's been a uh, Scottish ambassador in mm. Washington, uh, a diplomat based in the, the British Embassy, but that post has been vacant for some months. Has it now been filled? Uh, we have an acting uh, councillor here in the United States who's been assisting me with, uh, in fact, more than assisting me, has been uh, responsible for putting together the programme for this visit. Uh, the role will be substantively filled by the end of the summer. That's the timetable we've always been working to. And you're proposing a, a similar setup in Berlin. What's happening with that? Uh, we are working uh, towards the establishment of the Berlin hub. The arrangements for that are underway just now. We'll make further announcements for that in due course. In about a week or so's time, I will be in London opening the new investment hub that we've established in London. So we have one in Dublin. We're about to open the one in London. The Berlin one will be the next one to that. That's our political correspondent, Glenn Campbell, speaking to the First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, in New York.